They came to the 12th floor for a gesture, or a motion, or a sign. But they received something more, a moment. It's almost like a wave of hope, like you're not in this on your own. It's a salute to those kids and to their, their parents and the family members. It just kind of brings it all home, what is important. It started September 2nd. It's time to start a new tradition here at Kinnick. And let's give a big Hawkeye wave to all the kids watching the game. A new tradition where Iowa fans at the end of the first quarter turn away from the field at Kinnick Stadium and wave to those watching from across the street. Patients looking down from the Stead Family Children's Hospital. One of the faces they might see in those windows was Daxon Fippen, 17 years old, fighting to recover from cranial surgery. Even during the whole surgery, I was super calm. I thought, he's going to go in, he's going to come out. And then he came out, and he couldn't dress, he couldn't get out of bed, he couldn't use his hands, and I had a lot of fear. A few days later, with Daxon now conscious but his recovery slow, he found motivation in thinking of the view from those windows. He was super discouraged that day. And then he looked out the window and he said, at least Saturday's coming. <laughs> and then he just snapped right out of it. Being able to have that game to look forward to all week, that definitely helped with being able to make the days go by a little bit faster and easier, I guess. Do you see the letter I for Iowa? I-O-W-A. In another window, fans might have seen four-year-old Sam Davidson and his mother, Courtney. What they couldn't see was Sam's battle against a brain tumor and his cycles of chemotherapy. I don't think he understands the word cancer, and so we haven't really used that a whole lot. The chemotherapy is four, four or five days, and then we receive his stem cells, and then we recover, waiting for his blood counts to come up, and that's four cycles of that. All right, here we go. Oh, great job. But on a fall Saturday, it isn't about radiation or IVs. It's about celebration and anticipation. For all that he's endured and gone through, Sam wanted to find a spot right up front. It was pretty cool. Sam might not know it, but he means more to Iowa's head coach than he could ever imagine. This is a tough subject for me. Nobody plans on a visit to the kids' hospital. It's just, it's, it's not something you schedule or want to go through. The Ferentz family has been through it. In 2014, Kirk and Mary Ferentz lost their granddaughter, Savvy, who was born prematurely at Iowa Children's at just over 21 weeks. We knew it, it was too early. You try to stop labor, but they were unable to. Savvy was born and um, she survived for two days. And to see my son and daughter-in-law in such pain and um, it couldn't do anything, it couldn't do anything for it. That was probably the lowest moment. This past summer, Kirk and Mary made a million dollar donation to the hospital to create a program in neonatal research. After talking with Savvy's mother, Nikki, the family named the program in the baby's honor. The next couple of questions, Kirk, are hard yep. because they revolve around the origin of the donation. It's been a couple of years, and, um, you know, there'll always be an empty spot where Savvy was supposed to be. I mean, she's very much a part of our family, a part of our life. And I think the best thing was when I talked to Nikki. She goes, our biggest fear is that Savvy's memory will dim, and now it won't. So... When 70,000 turn away from the field and toward the windows, 
when they raise their arms and move their hands. It's a moment, and it means more than we know. You see it in, in the flood of people looking back at you. It was more emotional than anything, realizing that they were thinking about us. To me, it's just such a nice way for 70,000 people to recognize some really special people. The real heroes are up there. It's more than just a wave. <laughs> it's a lot more. It's life-changing for all of the patients here. <laughs>